Hello, and welcome to part two of this uh, Rhino 6 uh, matching your model with a photo tutorial. So this is the second part of the tutorial where we are trying to get our model here that is um, shown in some sort of very generic context and rather than rendering it with some light gray generic context, we want to render it and bring it into an actual site photo here. So in the previous tutorial we set up getting all the alignments and making sure that we're getting this to um, match correctly with all of its perspective. And now that we have set that part up, we will look and hit render. We can just come and take the outputted render and now do the sort of fine tuning to really bring it into the scene. So the first thing we need to do is open up the rendering that was created in the previous tutorial. So file open. And if our, I'm going to open up both the, the rendering that was created as well as the material ID at the same time. OK. So what I want to do is just to bring these into that that main um, corner view file that we are working with, which is the actual site photo. So I'll just right click and duplicate layer, drop down to my corner view, click OK, and close this. I'll right click this main view, duplicate layer, drop down to my corner view, click OK, close. So now if I go to my um, my main site photo, I can see here's my rendering that came in. Um, again, and the rendering is fairly simple. It's using all of the techniques that we set forward in the previous tutorials. So we're setting up materials, we have uh, HDR lighting, we have some sort of, you know, some glowing interior, um, nice sort of faked scenes inside that are just getting that interior noise that makes it feel real and allows for to get that layering of glass reflection versus uh, interior space. Um, my two layers are right here is layer two and three that I just copied in. So the first thing I need to do is get them to scale. I want to go and hit shift and make sure I have both uh, the rendering and the material ID highlighted so I can scale them together because um, they're going to We'll, we'll see how we use those together um, to, to tweak some lighting. So I can hit Control T or I can go edit transform scale. When I'm in scale, I always want to hold shift so that I maintain my proportions. So I have the guides that I originally used um, to define my properties still turned on. I can actually just follow those. I know that if I scale this and I'm touching the right-hand property side and the left-hand side that I know my building is going to be in scale because that's how I set it up in the original Rhino model to render. Um, so this should bring it all back together. Uh, the other things I know are where it touches the property line. So I know that that's my bottom corner here, and I know that it's running along the bottom edge of my uh, building. And when I took this photo, there was a sort of a warehouse on the site that has since been demolished, but I know that that's my bottom edge right there. So I can use that to align my bottom edge here. Um, and I'm actually coming out a little bit past the property line um, in this case as a, uh, um, a sort of zoning variance, but I do it doesn't necessarily matter that I hit the corner correctly. All that matters is that I'm touching the ground where the existing warehouse touches the sidewalk, which is the property line, and I'm touching the left property line and the right. And so I'm still a little bit too small. I'm going to scale this up just a little bit more. And now I'm touching the ground where my building touches, and also I'm touching this existing building on the right where the warehouse touches it now. So my scale and everything should be correct. So I'll click Enter to finish that command. Uh, but of course, I can't really see behind this yet. Um, one, because I rendered, I saved my HDRI with my background in there. So I don't need my guides anymore. So this shape layer I'm just going to turn off. Um, and I'm going to come down here. 
I'm going to bring my material ID in front of my render material. I'm going to just change the names of these really quick to keep my layers somewhat organized. I'll call this my V-Ray render. So the easiest way to sort of delete all of the stuff from my rendering that I don't want in there because all I want is just the building. I don't want this context, I don't want this really flat street, and I don't want the sky. So I'm going to come into this material ID. I'm going to use my magic wand tool, which the short key is W, but if you come down here, it's the fourth down, uh, the magic wand tool. My tolerance is set to 20, which should be good here. I'm just going to click anywhere in this black and it'll select the whole thing. Um, I'm going to hold shift, I'm going to click on my sidewalk layer, so that material ID is a sort of uh, um, burgundy color. And I'm going to click on my street layer, so that's like sort of that light blue, and that selects everything that is not my building itself. Um, if I go to my V-Ray render layer, turn off the material ID, of course the selection stays because I haven't deselected, I can just hit Control X to cut all of that stuff out. And it looks like I have a little bit of leftover garbage over here that somehow was not on the right layer. So I'm just going to do a little marquee window over that and delete that as well. But now that all of the Rhino context is deleted, all I'm left with is my uh, photo context. Um, so a few things right away that I sort of preemptively did in this photo to help make it the building feel more in the scene was this light pole was actually um, and so anything that's in front of the building, I needed to cut out and put it on its own layer. So this light pole, I came in and put it on its own layer. So you can see I can move it around independently. Um, and that was simply done by using the uh, lasso tool and just coming in and drawing a line around it very tediously, but nice and clean, and then just making a copy of it. And then I put it on its own layer called light pole so that it's that layer is in front of the V-Ray render layer so that in the image itself, I won't be overlapping it. I also did the same thing with the tree here. Um, turn the opacity up a little bit more. Um, I made a copy of that tree because that tree should be in front. And I should have made a copy of the base as well. So what I can do really quick to show you what I mean is if I come in here and just lasso the base. Don't need to get the whole thing of this tree. I go to my background photo layer, control C, control V, essentially just made a copy of that. Make this layer two what is the tree base. I'll take that layer and put it in front of my of my V-Ray render layer. Now that I turn that back on, you can see that the tree feels like it's coming in front of the actual uh, building itself. So it's again, it's a helping it sort of emerge or feel emerged into the site photo. Um, so once you have the building in there, on, at quick glance, I can see that the perspective does feel correct. The scale feels correct. There's, there's a few things you can kind of do to get your bearings on that. One is mostly just by eye to make sure it's correct. But um, we can open up our templates here, which is these lines that we drew early on that go to the vanishing points. And we can see that everything more or less is perfectly aligned, where if I were to draw a bunch of new lines off of known per parallels, they would go to the vanishing points as well. So that feels good. Um, the scale feels good. If I pull a guideline down um, to the horizon, I can start to get a sense of what the heights are. So um, the horizon is going to be at eye level for the viewer. So in this case, it's my eye level when I took the photo and I'm about six feet tall. So I know that the horizon should be right about at the top of you know, an SUV. Uh, but a little bit higher than a car, so we can see that everything feels right in the photo. And then if we look at the, maybe it's just a little bit higher. And if we look at the image itself, you can see that the 
um, horizontal lines end up being more or less perfectly horizontal at the um, horizon line. So these should be, so obviously up above it, you can see they're angled down and below it, they're angled up. But right at the horizon level, they should be more or less um, perfectly horizontal. And they're eh, just a little bit off, but they're pretty close. Um, you can see the lines on this garage door are actually perfectly horizontal. And I'm just a little bit off, but I'm not gonna fuss over it because in general, the scene feels really good. So I know that I have my scale, my, um, her, my vanishing lines are all correct and sort of my building height and in, in plane is in the right spot. So everything's feeling good. But now that we have some, some lighting issues to sort out, and this is really um, where you start to apply your own sense of style to the rendering um, and your own touch. But the one thing you want to get first is the lighting, and then um, we'll follow up in more tutorials about adding entourage and um, playing with some photo filters and some, some real Photoshop tips and tricks, but I want to just close out the uh, photo matching part with talking about lighting, because that's really what's going to make this feel like your lighting. And so the issue we face here is that we have the background photo that I took on one day that had a certain light, lighting characteristic. I cut out the sky because I didn't like how it looked and I wanted to put in my own sky that was maybe a little bit, uh, you know, the right color scheme, the right clouds. So I have this sky that I brought in that's just on its own layer and that sky has its own lighting. And then of course I have my V-Ray um, render. So that's, while we, we knew which angle we wanted to render it from, we knew which that the left side would be brighter than the right because you can see by the shadows that the sun's on my left side. Um, and I knew generally it was sort of late in the afternoon, so I got my timing sort of right that my the HDRI that I used in my V-Ray scene would be something that gives the same atmosphere as the photo. So I'm, I'm close, but I'm not perfect. And the best way to get everything to align is to go to your layers and what you're going to want to go to is this little half circle here and this is going to be your adjustment layers um, and if i click that i'm going to want to do a, a gradient map here um, and so i want to do a black and white gradient map but this is sort of inverted so if i actually just hit reverse this will just be a full black and white gradient map I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it on my very top layer. So this way I know it's affecting everything below it. Um, the reason I want to look at this in black and white is because when you look at something in black and white, it's a lot easier to tell what's off from a saturation and contrast um, and just general brightness level. So this allows me to see some things really quick. And when I put this on, what I see is that I have some high contrast in my actual site photos, some really, really dark spots. Um, and then my V-Ray rendering is actually pretty well balanced. My dark spots aren't too dark, and my light spots are maybe a little bit too light, but they're generally pretty good. This should be pretty bright. But then I look at my sky, and I actually go the opposite direction, where it doesn't have enough contrast. It's actually a little bit too medium. I don't have my brights, brights, and my dark darks don't have the right contrast level and the whole thing is just a little bit brighter than the scene photos. So by looking at it in black and white I can adjust all the light balances to get this to come together. So the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the background photo. And so while the general brightness is close the contrast is too high and mostly the part that's that's bugging me is that the, it's the dark darks are too dark. So I'm going to use a, a tool called um, adjustments so we go to Image, Adjustments, Shadows, and Highlights. So what this is going to allow me to do is to affect the darkest darks and the lightest lights and sort of work my way back. So if I start this at 0, 0, when I move this over here, what you see happening is the very darkest spots start getting lighter. But the medium ground stuff, so like the street and the sidewalk, they don't change that much. You really notice it in the dark spots. If I do it with the highlights, you see the inverse, right? So this really bright building and this bright sidewalk, they start getting darker, but the street and some of the medium tones don't change and certainly the darks don't change. So this, I can sort of work backwards and forwards, but I'm really mostly concerned with the shadows. 
So I'm just going to kick this up a little bit, maybe just 10%. You don't need to do it that much because I do want some, some contrast. I just didn't want quite that much. And I'm actually going to leave my highlights in this. Um, okay. So if I can, one way I like to sort of test if things are, are working is I'll uh, go to my history window and just kind of click back and forth to see what the difference it made. So this was right before, so this is my shadows and highlights. And you can see it's subtle, but now the overall light and dark contrast of my background feels more like the V-Ray rendering itself. Whereas but here, I felt like this contrast was too high compared to this. So that's getting a little better. But now let's go to my, my layer for the sky. And this, I'm going to play with it a different way. I'm going to do the more standard image adjustments, brightness and contrast. I'm just going to kick up the contrast a little bit here. Um, try and get some of those darks a little bit darker. I'm going to bring the brightness down just a little bit as well because I can see that it felt too bright for the scene. So now if I bring this you know, somewhere around negative 14, I have my contrast up a little bit more. Now all the light and dark balances of the whole image feel more aligned. And this is really going to help make the scene more believable. So I'll click OK. And this, from just very subtly where we started, starts to feel like everything is in a more even balance of um, light and dark tones. So if I go back to that gradient map, I'm actually not going to delete it. I'm just going to lower the opacity. If I lower it all the way down, now we're just back to um, our color image. I'm going to actually keep it at about 20%. This is just sort of a, a different way to reduce the overall saturation of the image. Um, if I look at this zero, it feels a little bit on the cartoony side. The skies are a little too blue. Um, oranges are a little too orange. If I like to keep my you know, this is where it starts to get into a more stylistic thing. Um, but I'm just going to desaturate that just a little bit, and it'll help sort of blend all my colors so I don't have, you know, wild saturation level differences. This will start to blend that out a little bit by keeping it at 20%. And it affects everything below it. So now, from a lighting standpoint, you can see that this really feels much more natural, that it's coming in here correct. Um, and it also feels... Um, the sky and the sea and the ground are matching. Everything is sort of coming together in a way that feels like the correct lighting. Um, and I think we'll stop right there as far as getting the photo matching part of the tutorial done. And when we come back, we'll look at um, adding some entourage and really fine tuning some material colors and playing with some image filters and some real stylistic Photoshop tips and tricks. Okay, thanks.